Last May, I shared with you all how my four dying citrus trees, an Oro Blanco grapefruit, an Arizona sweet orange, a Turaco blood orange, and a tangerine were faring after the first shock treatment to see if we could breathe new life into them. After a record-breaking hot Arizona summer, I'll show you how each tree fared, followed by some surprising results, along with which treatments worked and how each tree reacted. Disclaimer, I am not an arborist. They are the experts and knowledgeable in what's impacting your local area. They know about your climate and they can diagnose with accuracy what the problem is and come up with the best plan to make your trees healthy again. However, I am sharing my own experience with you so you and I can both learn together and see how these trees react and recover. Back in May, the Oro Blanco grapefruit was by far the front runner in this race. However, about a month after shooting this video, this tree showed the most stress. I discovered a dead branch seemingly out of nowhere and upon closer inspection, it looked like there was going to be a lot more dead branches soon. It looked like the summer heat in full force was too much and the upper branches were suffering from sunburn. Many of them have massive amounts of peeling bark on the top side. Thankfully, months later, the one branch is still the only one that died and the sunburn leaves are trying to recover now that we've just arrived at the part of the year where our highs are in the 80s. The Arizona sweet orange tree really responded to each fertilizer application every two months. It has filled in and the leaves are starting to take their old shape. I have high hopes for blossoms this spring. The Turaco blood orange tree is also filling in, also responding well to each fertilizer application. I've helped some of the branches point the right direction. Thankfully, the blood orange tree did not have the same reaction to the summer heat the way the grapefruit tree did. I found that interesting because many of the blood orange tree limbs are fairly long and the leaves do not provide much shade or protection for the branch itself, whereas the Oro Blanco leaves are very full and protective. This is still a fairly young tree, so I don't expect blooms in the spring, but maybe next year after another spectacular year of growth from this extra feeding regimen. As for the tangerine tree, it's back. Had we not gone this route, I am 95% sure this tree would be dead. All of the old leaves have fallen off at this point. So if there was no new growth, I'd be filling up the trash can every week. Instead, it's coming back to life from the inside out. It's almost as if the dead limbs are protecting the newer leaves. It's just crazy to see all this fuzzy green inside with the scraggly outside. I doubt there will be blooms in the spring, but who cares? I'm not cutting this tree down and there's always next year. Now let's switch gears and talk about how the treatment plan worked. Last time I shared, I was applying Organicide 3-in-1 spray in a weekly cycle with Kellogg fertilizer every two months, along with Moget Vigor 53 pots. I did not see any bugs on any of the trees except for a few leaves with Asian citrus leaf miner on the Oro Blanco grapefruit. The Kellogg fertilizer was amazing. The trees reacted to this fertilizer like I hadn't seen them react before. I can't wait to see how they react during the more temperate time of the year. It will probably be even better in the spring with the rainwater we harvest. As for the Moget Vigor 53 pods, I had noted before how each of the other trees had some sort of sap reaction, except for the tangerine tree. They also all reacted in terms of having some bark crack. Over the course of the next month, all four trees had some sort of bark peeling at the location where the pod pierced the tree. I definitely need to reapply reflective white paint to keep what's left protected, and I'll put the next round of pods on the opposite side where there's more shade. Now it's time for another round of fertilizer and pods. I'll be back in the springtime to share the results of winter with you. In the meantime, if you're in the same boat looking for answers and you haven't seen the first video on what started this process, check it out here. It covers the different diseases affecting these citrus trees for you to compare against your own. I've also included links to what's working for me in the description below, but definitely check with your local arborist to get the best advice for your area. I'd also love to hear what's working for you. Thanks for watching and I will see you next Friday.